Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Talking Balax podcast. As you heard, if you're listening on Spotify, in the in the introduction, as Gary Barlow famously said, hopefully we are back for good this time. Uh, Ewan, how are we doing? I'm good, thank you. Good to be back. Yeah, it's been too long, to be fair, mate. But as we keep saying, life keeps getting in the way. But it's it's hopefully, hopefully this time we're able to uh, stick with it and and carry on because we do love doing it. It's just we both have very very demanding jobs and it becomes t- time is there's not enough hours in the day basically is there mate no there's not and i mean everyone probably knows already but we are teachers and people don't seem to realize what goes on behind closed doors after 3 30 and yeah so yeah. apologies but we do plan on being back more long term yeah we got some ideas and we got we got we've actually got some uh some things in the pipeline we've got a couple of well, we've got one particularly like tasty interview hopefully coming up which Leicester fans particularly of a a certain ilk in the 90s will be very very uh keen to hear um but like just just on that I just wanted to say like one of the reasons why like football is so big for both of us is like me and you and a quite big advocates of like social causes to an extent but particularly like we value mental health really highly and like I know myself that recently like I've I've not been in the most amazing place at times, and like football is such an escape. And for, for me in particular, like Leicester this season, it's been like, e- despite how shit we've been, got a swear word in within two minutes. That's fantastic. But um, the, despite how rubbish we've been this season, and apparently continue to be after last night, is that like, it's it's just escapism. It distracts you from these things. So when you win it, especially when you are feeling like down, and when when thing when life gets gets on your back, like when you when your team's winning and when you're doing so well it's such a lift and like when it's not it's yeah it's not the be all and end all it's but it, it's just it's escapism and it's what it's what keeps us going which is why we want to get back into it and we want to keep doing it because we know that a lot of you have told us how much you how much you'd love listening to to the podcast like a lot of our sort of more regular listeners and we, we do seem to pick up people along the way and people seem to like what we're doing and we want to we want to do more of it it's just yeah time commitment but we, we've we've said we're gonna we can't promise reliability because you know it's just we haven't so far so you know take us on that but we uh we've we've penciled in a, a time slot every week we're gonna try and get them out once a week so let us know what you think if if you do enjoy them keep keep tuning in and we'll keep producing them so but you anything anything to weigh in on it anything you want to start the ball off with this week um I think. What's most important to probably say with you, obviously being a Leicester fan, is last night was so intriguing for a neutral. Massively intriguing as a neutral because on paper, you should batter that team. And I know football isn't played on paper. I mean, God, Newcastle shouldn't be third if you're doing it on paper. But there's so much quality in your team and a real lack of quality in theirs. But it was, I mean, we spoke about it last night when you left the ground. It just feels like there's so much wrong with Leicester at the minute. And I, 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 you're not the only club that's got massive issues. I mean, even today, obviously, with Leeds losing Victor Orta, I mean, I've seen the video of him in the stands making a right fool of himself. There's just so much calamity in the league at the minute and it makes for great viewing. And that's why I believe it's the best league in the world. But when you look at the quality throughout the league, I don't understand how some teams and some managers aren't getting more from their players. I really don't. And I think maybe... <laughs> Bring it back to Newcastle, I think Eddie Howe's made me realise that because Steve Bruce being in charge and obviously what we're doing now just shows. And people will be first to say, oh, it's the money, you know, right, whatever. If that's what you want to believe, that's what you want to believe, that's fine. But all we're doing is catching up with the teams that were around us, like your Wolves, mm. um, like your Villas, who've spent stupid money. So it's nice to see that we're actually not that team at the bottom that's just a basket case and just a mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, we've suddenly become that. Like, I know for for ages we were seen as like we were we were lauded as the same way that Brighton are at the moment and Brentford are at the moment. And actually, that's all kind of gone recently. Like, our decision making has been really poor. Like, our our actual like like we've been through this. I, I mean, I went through this in in one of our last episodes we did. Like before we before we disappeared for a while, but like it that that still hasn't changed. Like decision making wise like things are just really poor at the moment and that's that's what's put us in the position that we're in and ultimately like we've got too many players there that are out of contract this summer so they, they, they're not bothered because they're not going to be playing for Leicester next season so they're not going to give everything and fight fight tooth and nail to 
stay in the league because they know they'll probably be in the league anyway. But it's yeah, last night was frustrating. Like I've I've already voiced like the group chat last night. I was I was actually holding back a little bit with what I was saying. But my God, like we were we were uh, yeah, it was it was a frustrating one last night for sure. And but but then there, there is the positives, and that's like it, well, it's it's not a positive actually. Like I, I'm the positive. The one really big positive to take from that was, I mean, Daniel Everson, like unbelievable mm, performance from yeah. him. But then, but then it's a negative because you go, well, where's he been all season? Why has he not been starting in between the sticks all season? Then you come back to, well, what? Like I said this when we appointed Dean Smith that like I'm not going to blame him for us going down. Like he's he's not at fault for us going down. Whoever came in, they were going to have a really tough job on their hands and. To turn things around and turn turn around the forms and he's he's turning players' forms around like he's brought Sunchi back in and he's probably arguably been man of the match in every game he's played for us like and then Vardy has scored two in two like he's got him back in the team and actually playing to his strengths like dropping it in behind and then Everson's come in and he's like yes his his distribution is really poor at times like I'm not gonna like lie about that like he's not the ideal goalkeeper but how. Rogers thought that Danny Ward was better than him is just outrageous to me. Like, is it the Liverpool link? Was that what it was? Do you think I, he, I don't, he knew I, him from Liverpool and he just he just backed him? Because we said last night, main thing about a goalkeeper is keep the ball out the net. Nick Pope yeah. came in and everyone was a bit like, oh, is he better than Nebraska? Yes, he is. Yeah. Yes, he's unbelievably better because he, he doesn't let things go by him. Yeah. And if it does, it's got to be spectacular. And even then. He's a decent sweeper keeper. He can't kick very well. He's just not that. But the reason we are where we are is because he's so good as a goalkeeper, the first yeah. and foremost thing needed. And that's what Everson did last night. I mean, yeah. that save in the first half where he's he's like parried it. It's it, He's made himself big, stood up, and he's parried it over the bar. Well, that, it was a phenomenal save. I brought myself... I mean, I didn't watch the highlights last night because I was still a bit, a bit disappointed, but I brought myself to watch him this morning. And it looked like an incredible save from where I was sat. But... When I watched it on the replay, I was like, it was even better because Awobi hit it mm. really hard. And it was kind of here. It was in quite an awkward sort of position for him. It wasn't like he got his hand out to it or just put he, his hand he up. Flicked it was, it up it was in, like, didn't he? yeah, it was like he had to just get a reaction. And it was an unbelievable save. Like, and then even the one in the second half from Decore, like that one where he gets down with a strong left hand, like that's, that's a ridiculous mm. save as well. Like, I'm not being funny. Like, um, we saw this in, in numerous games, like Danny Ward, like it, Danny Ward concedes four last night. I'm not being funny, like, and, and, and this, I'm not just digging him out because there's loads of players that need to that we have questions over this season. But like, yeah, Danny Ward concedes four last night, like easily. There's some of those saves that he just doesn't make, like, and I don't know if it is the Liverpool links. I I think it's more that Rogers has looked at Danny Ward and gone, he's an established international goalkeeper, and you're like, yeah, but he it, before he kind of became Leicester's number one, and even at times like. He was kind of fighting for his place with Wayne Hennessy, and Wayne Hennessy's never been a top Premier League goalkeeper. Like it, that's, it's just not putting your trust in a young lad. I, I kind of get that if he said that's his reason, but after half a season, how, how old is he, uh, Everson? He's like 24, 25, but he's been very uh, young for a goalkeeper. Yeah. Very, I mean, very young. So much learning to do there. Yeah, I mean, and, and if if you think that, um, as a goalkeeper, like especially in the position that we're in right now, like. I don't care about style of football. I just want us to win games. And one of the best ways to win games is to have the best players on the pitch. And if he can keep saves, keep the ball out of the net like that, like then he's the best best option for me. I don't care if he can kick the ball or not. As long as he can keep the ball out of the net, that's that's all I'm bothered about. Like, and he, he's, I mean, yeah, he conceded two last night. One was a penalty and one was a, a, another close finish by Iwobi. But like, he just, he was just brilliant. He was absolutely brilliant last night. And I think if we'd have won the game, he'd have got even more plaudits because you'd have looked at it and said, he's the reason that we won the game in the end. Well, he, he got man of the match off Sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, I mean, fully deserved. But like, yeah. it's just, I feel like from Leicester fans, like, it, I think the whole place was just a little bit dejected at the end because it was, we, we went 1-0 down, obviously, and then got back to 2-1, which is something we just hadn't really been doing in, in a lot of games this season mm -hmm. is coming back from behind. But then yeah. <sighs> Missing that penalty, right? I, mean, I said it last night and I still stand by it. Like, if we score that penalty, the game's done. The, the 3 1 at half time, like, they get, the game is done. Like, yes, they could have got a goal back, but like, going in at half time 3 1, they have no chance to get back into it. The game resets after in the second half. The game's, the game's done. 
it's the same as it was against you. When that third goal went in, their heads just dropped, and that was that was that. Mm -hmm. And it was just such. A... What what's what's really like stark to me is I, I I know you said you've watched the highlights. I don't know what highlights you watch, but Pickford as he's going in after saving that penalty in the half time, he's celebrating in front of the fans. He's giving it fist bumps, he, and they're mm -hmm. still two one down at this point. Yeah. But it's because me, he. It's because he knew. Tells you he knew Leicester can crumble now. Yeah, that's, yeah. There's he, a, there's he knew a thing in the back of his head, and that that's that's probably very arrogant of him for one, but also probably shows you the type of character he is in terms of you know he's a captain of that side. He went in that chain room buzzing, probably got them up for it, and then you've got obviously your lads going in thinking, shit, yeah, shit, yeah. And, and the that's whole the mindset and momentum switches completely. If you score that third goal, like they come out in the second half, like Leicester, not not so much Everton, but Leicester come out and they can they can play with a bit of freedom and there's a bit of pressure off them because they've got the two goal that two goal cushion. Like it's a different it's a different ball game in that second half because, like you said, like Pickford is always going to be one to give the big ones. Like he always has been. That's just who he is. Like mm -hmm. and but yeah, you're right. Like he would have literally made, saved that and gone. That's huge. We're still in this game. If he concedes it, if he's picking it out the back of his net, even he's probably like fucking hell. Like that's tall, tall, tall order. Something big to come back from now. But honestly. go on, talk about the um, priority of penalty takers because that's something that really confused me as well. And I know you've got a few well, things to say on that. Well, I don't get it. Like, I, like Dean Smith came out last night and said in his interview, and fair enough. Like, and this is the thing that he's done that, like, already just this is an example of what he's done that Rogers wasn't doing. He he's shouldering that responsibility. He's taking it away from the players. He's not saying, "Oh, I need to rebuild this squad. These players aren't good enough anymore." He's gone. When I came in, I changed the penalty order. Ian Atchu was the first penalty taker, then Madison, and I'm just going, "Hang on." But but as far as that is, like all season, yeah. I know like Lawrence said last night in the group chat, like Tielemans' record this season hasn't been great, but he has been our penalty taker for like two years. And then after that, you've got Vardy, who is is. Probably, yeah, he, he maybe might be questioning himself in a big moment like that, having only got two goals. But the, the goal he took, he took it so confidently. Like, there was no... His him goals have around. been in the last two games, though. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, not even, like it was in August. Yeah, but the goal he scored last night was like... There was there was no like lack of confidence there, was it? Even no, even the one that hit like, the bar. He's not like that, is he? He's yeah. someone who oozes confidence all the time. Like, so the, the one where he hit the bar, he was, he was unfortunate there because... Vardy three years ago gets that on to the end of that. He outpaces. I, I don't know who the defender was next to him, but he outpaces him and he just has a shot. But because he doesn't have that real burst, he, he's still quick, but he doesn't have that real burst of pace that he had last, like the last few years. Like he has lost that real sharpness that he had. He had to take those extra touches. But even then, like he's tried, he, he's he's chopped it back. He's confident enough to to chop it, chop it again, then try and dink it. And on another day, he scores that. But it's just. It's it's really really like frustrating that a player who has like he hasn't taken a penalty for us for four years. The last penalty he took was against Cardiff four years ago, and you're thinking, how is this? That's mad. That yeah yeah. But then at the same time, I'm looking at the team. I don't know who else. Like it probably would have gone in order based on who was on the pitch last night. Tielemans, Vardy, Madison. Yeah, probably, and then then maybe Barnes. That's that... what Pickford had it as on on his bottle. He thought it, his order was Tielemans, Vardy, Madison. Everyone will have seen the clip now. Everyone's seen the mm -hmm. screenshots. But Tielemans, hundred percent to the left. Um, I know three out of his last four have been missed, but even still, he's the number one penalty taker mm -hmm. has done for quite a few years. Vardy was, um, it said something like weight, and then centre and right were the two most predominant. Um, mm. as yeah, in, he just, as you're he looking just, at it, yeah, he just he hits, hits it, them really. hard, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, and then um, Madison was sixty percent in the center, and I was saying to you, when you watch that penalty, he shapes it like a free kick. Now, there's nothing wrong if you're, like you said, literally leather it as hard as you can yeah. in high, the certain high. area of the goal. Get that completely. Get it. Shearer used to do it all the time. Hmm. It was it was his thing. He 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 left it like. To no like no chance. I'm gonna hit this as hard as I can. So if the keeper gets there, he isn't getting it out. He isn't keeping it out. But he's shaped to it so weird. And Pickford almost looks like he's gonna gamble left because he's shaped it weird. But as he comes to the ball, he doesn't actually. 
how do I put it? Like his foot almost comes so centrally, he can't possibly hit it anywhere yeah. other than in the middle quadrant of yeah. the goal. It just can't be hit any any other way because he doesn't come across it. He doesn't punch it. Mm. It's almost just like I'm I'm gonna just kind of lift it into the middle, and it was so predictable. And yeah. obviously Pickford at the end really did kind of he gave him a bit of stick, and obviously the pals because they're both at England together. But it felt like that was Madison trying to take spotlight. And you said this last night. And really, that shouldn't that shouldn't be the case in a relegation battle. Prior, priority should always be winning the game. Like it doesn't matter. Like your personal pride has to come out of the way of it. Like, like there's like for example, a lot of people said like on Tuesday night, like between Leicester and Leeds, like um, when Daka squared that one to Vardy and Vardy put it in the back of the net. Everyone was like, oh, why didn't Daka shoot on his own? It's like, well, Vardy was in a better position. All he had to, it, and yeah. I'm not I'm not going to criticize Vardy too much, but if he just held his run a little bit, he's he's on side. But like Daka is out of form as well. And he's gone, okay, Vardy's over there, he's in space, and he, he passes it to Vardy, it's a perfect pass, and he scores. The only the only problem is that Vardy's just gone too early. Like nothing was wrong with it apart from Vardy's run. Daka didn't do anything wrong. Daka put it on a plate perfectly for him. Sometimes you've just got it's like the old argument about FIFA, isn't it? Like, you know, when you people used to score the sweaty goals when you used to get in and just pass it past the keeper, you go, Well, winning is the most important thing. And like and when you're in these positions, three points is like I would rather win today, lose at Fulham, than draw today and draw at Fulham. Because we get mm-hmm. more points from it, like yeah, more points rather, out of it, yeah. Yeah, I would rather play out my skin to win that game against Everton, taking all points off a team around us, and then lose to Fulham because we we will have more points out of the games, you know. Like ideally, yeah. now we've got, we've got to go to Fulham and win, and I think I think I think we can. Like I said, we've got quality. It's just it's it's now winning, winning mentality breeds so easily as well. Like, yeah. I, I go into games still as a new, and I, I know I'm bringing it back to Newcastle, but it's what I can refer to quite easily. <sighs> I'm going into games not confident, and we're coming out four, five, ones, yeah. and I'm. It's it it. It doesn't matter what I think, and I go mm. to most games. I'm I'm there at every single home game. I'm out the last five games in the season. I'm going to four of them. The last one being Chelsea away, and I and I can't lie. I, I've seen us play phenomenal football this season. Whatever anyone says, it's not true. We play brilliant football, but those players that we've got are not top four material. They're no. just not. No, no, no. But. But they are they are doing what they're good at, and Eddie Howe is getting them to play to their strengths. Sven Botman said it in an interview. He said the one thing that has shocked me is Eddie Howe finds strengths that players don't even know they had. So players like Jacob Murphy, Sean Longstaff, which are probably really two easy whipping boys, but they're both Geordies. Mm. Jacob Murphy and his brother um, Josh were both adopted, but they both were born in Gateshead, yeah. and they ended up like moving and and they've come back. And Jacob bleeds black and white. And all he wants to do is do as he's told. And it just shows that if you can get one or two goals under your belt, you're unplayable. In your mm. own head, you think, well, I, I'm, I'm better than this guy. Yeah. If you'd won that game, you'd have gone to Fulham with far more, we can beat these, than, oh, we gave away a lead. Everson was man of the match. We missed a penalty. Like That, that breeds negativity, whereas if yeah. the positivity would have bred in a different way if had you had that cutting edge, that killer edge, that... We're not we're not going to leave, leave leave this to chances, which is another thing we said last night. And I'm sorry, but as a number nine, Jamie Vardy has to be taking that penalty in that moment. That's just what I think, being mm. a striker, I guess. But no, I'd, I'd agree. I'd agree. But right, we should go on about this all day. Uh, so we will get on to the uh, the main body of what we're we're going to talk about today, and that is the uh, we're a little bit late to the party on this one, but we just thought we'd weigh in anyway because you know it's a bit of fun. Why not? Um, but it's the, the like the team of the season nominations have been put forward, and we had a chat about this. Um, us, between ourselves and obviously in our group chat as well, and there was a lot of there was a lot of agreement, but also disagreement in terms of not not between us, but in terms of the list. So I'm going to quickly share the uh, try and share the list now, so people can see it. If those of you who are listening on Spotify, I will um, I will go through them with you. I'll, I'll name some of them for you. Um, where is this? Right, money. Okay, got it. Right, so. Obviously, it's a, a guy who I want to pronounce properly. Zach Bowie on uh, Twitter uh, tweeted this out. If it's loading, there we go. Uh, actually, just about see it. I'll run through uh, names for you. Okay, so goalkeepers, you got Nick Pope, Ramsdale, Allison, Leno, and Kepper. Defenders, you got Gabriel. Okay, Lee, so I'm just going to Sven Botman, Zinchenko. Like that, oh. that Kepper one. Oh my God, who is watching these games? I cannot. Well, mate, we'll, we'll come. Life. We'll come. We'll come. To, oh. we'll come to yeah, it. Go on, we'll come go on, to sorry. it. Sorry, yeah. I'm just. I'm so irritated by this list. No, mate. mate 
don't because I, I could go on about it forever. Like this, so, on, so many players in there. We'll, we'll hammer them. Uh, we'll hammer them. Zinchenko, Thiago Silva, Alessandro Martinez, Ben Mee, Luke Shaw, Romero, Ruben Diaz, Odegaard, De Bruyne, Casemiro, Rodri, Bruno Gamaris, Alexis McAllister, Paulinha, Madison, Solly March, Matoma, Bentenker, Hoiberg, Haaland, Saka, Kane, Martinelli, Greedish, Rashford, Salah, Almiron, Watkins, Havertz, Mares, and Nunez. So we have decided to create our 11 between us. And we're, we've we've agreed on quite a few, but we've disagreed on a few as well. So in a second, I will put up our like team that we've agreed on, first of all. Um, but let's just run through some of those names because I mean I'm going to run off I, I could pick easy I could pick in you could tie me with this even but I reckon in in five seconds I could name five players that shouldn't be on there go on then right starting uh, three two all. one Kepper uh, Romero Madison March Bentinker was that five I, I, I think it was, yeah. I'm just going to go through some of my... Kepa's a joke. He's, he's I didn't even get to, I didn't even get to the strikers. I didn't even get to the strikers. Didn't even get to the strikers. Honestly, that's how, that's ridiculous. Like, I could carry on. Um, Sorry, go on, mate. You I would argue... Yours. I would also say that... I, not that I dislike Ben Mee, but what's Ben Mee done differently than anyone else in mid-table's done? Like Diop at Fulham's had a really good season. So what 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 justifies yeah, the Reem, picking of me like, over yeah. Diop? Tim Ream, like it, for me, that's that's a nothing pick. Oh. That's oh, let's try and get a Brentford Lu- player in. Lu- like, let's, and, let's let's go off that. Lu- Lewis Dunk, Pontus. Oh, that was Pontus. He's not really played that much, but like um, Norgard, like D- Dunk's a else? very good shout. Uh, even um, Tyrone Mings, like second half of the season has been fantastic. As much as I don't Rico, rate him Rico that Henry, high, but, Rico yeah, Henry, like this back for Brentford. So many like, in the midfield, like, though, and and since since Hodgson's come in, Anderson's. I mean, it's a short term thing, granted, but Anderson's been brilliant again. And he like, it's mm, just yeah. But there's so many players there well. that just, they just they just shouldn't be in there. Some of those players, like the the big one for me is like that the the big the really sort of glaring one for me that absolutely should not be in there. Like at, there's two to be fair, and that's Hoiberg and Romero. And that's not a, that's not a Spurs bias. It's just like no, no, no. not a chance. Like, like also, not also, can I say Kai Havertz is a disgrace as well? Oh yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. And, and I mean, I'm probably getting a little bit picky, but even and and this again, I can only speak from what I <laughs> I see all the time. But how can Nunes be in there with nine mm. goals, costing ninety million quid nearly? Yet Callum yeah, Wilson and Isaac, who both both got more, haven't played less games. Not in that list. Yeah, I'd, and like, there's no but, uh, Tony's not even in there. Harvey Barnes, he's, I mean, it'd be funny, he's been crap this season, but he's got more goals than Darwin Nunes as well, like this season, and we've been absolutely <laughs> awful. Like, but then, but then this is the thing, like, we were talking about, I was having this debate with like Kev in the group chat, wasn't I? That, like, because mm. we, we were both saying numbers and we were like, Salah's not had a great season in terms of his numbers, but Rashford's numbers are better than they have been. I know you've got stuff to say about Rashford, but like, <clears throat> like, it's, that the eye test is really important as well. And like it's the influence players have on games. Like it was really difficult for me actually to like um spoiler here, um, for any Man City fans. Like I didn't pick Grealish, but it was difficult not to pick him. Because even though his numbers haven't been out like unbelievable this year, again, his influence in that city team and the 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 kind of influence that he has on games as well is so so yeah. important this season for City. Like he's been so so good. But again, like yeah, I mean, he has again, been brilliant. but again, like here, like midfielders, no, no, Hoiberg's in there, and yeah, the less said about the next person, the better. But like Thomas Partey's not in there, like, and Hoiberg is, like, where's like, what's jo- Joe? Yeah, Joe, uh, Chris, uh, Joe Willock. Like, of all, I'd like let, we you could name like fifty more players, and the eleven would still pick. I, I think really the eleven, I think that like the sixteen, if you could pick a. A best eleven plus subs, that probably picks itself. But yeah, like it's the rest of them outside of that, you could literally put any bloody name in. There, I hate maybe. the talking gestures, though. I hate the talking gestures. Chelsea at twelfth. How can yeah, any yeah. of their players be in that squad? The only one I'll give you is Thiago Silva. I'm not giving you any others, and Thiago Silva's not even like I'm criticizing him. But there's been no. better. That's more the point. And and Thiago Silva, like, I hate it. He, it's it's just to tick a big Chelsea box. His name's in there, but he don't make the team. 
Like I hate like no. he, I love Thiago Silva, but he didn't make the team. But no on way. that, on that, let, let's let's actually get to let's get to our team. So I'm going to stop sharing this screen. I'll actually put our our team. So the ones that are in place already are the players that we have agreed on. Again, those of you on uh, Spotify, I will go through our team with you. So we go. We we decided to go with a four three three because we thought it's the easiest one to kind of put our the players that we wanted to into the team okay it accommodates so, most positions doesn't it yeah and i think actually it, it's the best formation for what i think is the best 11 this season i think probably the same for you um so the players that we've agreed on in the 4-3-3 so we said nick pope in goal we both did uh we both said trippier at right back we both said saliba as one of the center halves we both said rodri we both said odegaard we both said saka and we both said harland um but the rest of the team is kind of where we disagree, and I don't, I don't think we we're going to disagree. Like, um, like I don't think it's going to be spiritedly disagreeing. I don't think we're going to like be like saying you're completely wrong. I think we'll both be able to justify our our picks completely, and I think a lot of you listening will probably say yes and no to both to both of us to an extent. But our game now is to try and convince the other one that they are wrong without uh, without getting too emotional about it. So you and you 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 have said for the other centre half you said Botman I said Ruben Diaz now why why have you gone I'm I'm not saying that you're wrong because I mean like I, I picked Diaz over Botman but that doesn't mean I don't think Botman's been sensational this year. The the thing the thing for me is right and this is how I look at it I don't think Botman has been our best centre half. He's just not on that list. And bear in mind we are doing it off that list. We're not picking mm -hmm. it according to what we think. Yeah. I actually think Shah's been our better defender out of the two. Shah's yeah. been probably our biggest bargain of the century, given that he cost three million quid and he's been turned into this phenomenal ball playing centre half, but also defends well. So yeah. I would have probably gone Shah. But Botman, because quite simply, Newcastle have let in the least amount of goals this season. Nobody's letting less. I'd also say that I think Ake has been better than Diaz in City's side because he's been so like he's been thrown into left back. He's he's playing almost like in a back three, a back four. So for me, although Diaz is phenomenal, he is just brilliant. I think Botman, given that he's so young, he's coming to the league. And nobody expected us to be where we are, but nobody expected mm. us to have the best defence either because everyone's criticism of how and even me was, oh, can he set up a solid defence? If you watch Sven Botman, man to man, he's pocketed Tony this season. He's pocketed Calvert-Lewin. And I know you might think, oh, well, Calvert-Lewin, but Calvert-Lewin's a handful. He's someone who likes yeah, to run yeah. in behind. He's phenomenal in the air. And Botman literally just quietened him down and didn't give him a sniff after the first 10 minutes. He, yeah. against Haaland at St. James's, Harland, it was one of his first games and he was scary. But Botman wasn't phased by it. He just wasn't intimidated by that. Um, mm. Harland did end up getting a goal, but there was moments where he got tight to him and, and just said, right, okay, yeah, you, you're a fantastic footballer. You're very physically int intimidating, but I'm going to give as good as I get. And for a 22-year-old, I've been so impressed. So, so yeah. impressed. And I, I say the same. I just think that like, Botman's played... I mean, I've got, I have got the stats in front of me, so I don't think I'm lying when I say this. Botman's played 31, Diaz has played 24, right, this season. Now, yes, you've got a better defence, and that's that's absolutely true. However, in in less games, which kind of kind of helps him a little bit, like Botman's stats are all superior to Diaz's in in terms of like successful tackles, interceptions, blocks, clean sheets. But then also, he's in a side that he's in a side that doesn't dominate the ball as much. Like it's, it's harder. I've always maintained like it's, it's yeah, you can be a, a great defender in those teams, but like, actually you also don't have to defend as much when your team controls the ball, like all the time, I think. But I just think that Diaz is, is like arguably the best defender in the league. And I think that he has been for a few years and there's, there's no, it's no coincidence that city's top form that they're on now started when Diaz came back as a regular player yeah. in the team because he he was in and out like early in the season. He settled so he, them down, didn't he? He settled yeah, them down. And he's come in and ever since then, City have just been relentless. Like, And I, I think that is a testament to how good he is. And I think Diaz is... I still think like by most fans, he's criminally underrated. I think a lot of people don't realise how 
outstanding Ruben Diaz actually is. Uh, and I think he'll be one of them in, I don't know, five, ten years' time. We'll all look back on and go, yeah, he was fucking brilliant. But like, he, he reminds me of uh, Vidic and company in his, in his way and his style and his, his, his character. He's got yeah. that traditional centre half about him, and I, I mean, I, I think he's brilliant. He's phenomenal. Yeah, so it's it's a difficult one because I I would I would be happy to concede Botman, but also I'd, con- I'd, I'd, I'd concede feel, it as I'd well. Also, I'm, I'd I'm, also feel I'm very aggrieved leaving. Yeah, I'd also feel very aggrieved leaving um, Diaz out the side. But I'm I am going to I'm going to concede. Um, I'm going to concede to Botman because I'm going to save my. Strong anti Newcastle, and it's not anti Newcastle. Well, it's, see, it's, it's, was, an, it's an anti, it's an anti Ewan, <laughs> it's an anti Ewan bias um, to somebody further up the pitch. But we'll uh, we'll we'll get to that. So uh, left back. Now this one, I, I think I I win this one easily um, because I said Zinchenko, and you said Lissandro Martinez. Yeah, just because I couldn't fit him in at centre half. Um, and I don't think See, Zinchenko's good. been that good that makes him stand out above what Martinez has done in centre half. That's my argument, but I can understand why Zinchenko wins this one. But this is this is kind of the thing I always find with these teams. And you said it yourself when we looked at the list. It's like it's it can't be a token player, you know. Like Luke Shaw's the other contender, but again, like he's played centre half at, for United as well, played left side centre half when Martinez has been how injured or suspended or not played or whatever it is like he's played left side center off and he's done it well as well but if you look at it like zinchenko was brought into this arsenal team and they've they've put up a title challenge and yeah like it, i mean it's not over yet like they still could claw it back and win the title and if they do then it'd be worth revisiting this and say yeah zinchenko probably does slot in at left back but i just think zinchenko is one of yeah he's, he's had a difficult last few games but so is everybody for arsenal like I've seen Martinez, like his first game in the Premier League was against Brentford, or wasn't it? And I think he got bullied off the park by Ivan Tony, didn't he? And they, like, yeah, Ma- it, they've every every all of these players that we're going to put in this team can have bad games. Like, my, my whereas um, Zinchenko my is so- go on, go on, Jack. Sorry, you finish. You finish. I, I was just going to say, Zinchenko is like he's one of the reasons why Arsenal are contenders this year because he's he came into this team and he's one like they're at an. There's still that naivety and that youthful exuberance about them, but he, I would strongly say that he's one of the reasons why they are where they are. I don't think he's yeah. the sole reason, but he is one of them. The 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 thing I would say is, um, Martinez. Although, well, I've seen him live twice now. Um, saw him at the cup final, and I saw him at St James's. At St James's, he was probably their only player I was actually impressed with. Mm. Um. The only thing I would say, <laughs> and you you hit the nail on the head, is for a defender who's heralded as this saviour of Man United's back four, he hasn't half shipped some goals. Yeah. At Anfield, seven. Seven, yeah. Six or um, Bre- Brentford. Did he um, play at City when they shipped six? Yes, yes, he did, because my mate checked that one out when he was having a, a debate with someone. Um, yeah. So the point is, like what you said there is, yes, he's a phenomenal player. Yes, he's great. But at the same time, he has shipped a lot of goals. And for all of his strengths, there's clearly an element of, I don't know, maybe rawness to him in the, in the Premier League. And I don't mean rawness in terms of his ability, but that naivety of if three or four go in, it can get worse. This isn't going to just stay 4-0. Yeah. This is going to get worse. I like that he's aggressive and front-footed, but at times it does seem a little bit like he's playing on the edge. And if he get sent oh it's like Casemiro like we said this as well like Casemiro is brilliant but he does you, you, you Martinez does strike me that if things do go backwards for United again he could be one of them players that ends up out the team a lot I think I think stuff. Martinez has done worse this season than Casemiro has but he hasn't seen a red yet which is yeah, yeah. strange for me because I think it maybe is his height that gets him away with it so I remember when mm. he who did did he kick Bamford in the head or stand on his head or something or stand on his chest there was there was a so. moment where he's done something and it didn't even get checked. Whereas Casemiro got a really harsh red against, mm. can't remember who it was, but he went over the ball slightly. Was it Southampton? Yes. Yeah, yes, it was. You're right. Um, so arguably, I actually think that Martinez has got away with more, and Casemiro's maybe been hard done by. Mm. Um, so I can completely, uh, yeah, I can see that one. That's Zinchenko's position. Yeah, I think it's just, I think it's just, do we play the actual 
left back in the team that comes second or a centre half out of position for a team who might not even finish in the top four. Um, but they probably will. I think you you two have got it sorted out. It's just who finishes third or fourth. Stop jinxing it. <laughs> mate, I've just, I'm, you just got I'm to, worried. I'm you've worried. You've just got you've just got to accept these things, mate. Like I've I accept I've accepted now. Like the weight off my shoulders after accepting that we're going down is is different. So see, I don't think I don't think you are, but I don't. Yeah, luckily you you only watched that last night. You don't have to watch that every week. Um, <laughs> right, I'm gonna, I'm going to start. I'm gonna, I'm going to miss out the midfield because I think that's where the big debate's going to be had. I'm going to jump up to this left left striker spot here. So, so far, I'll just quickly run through the team with you again. We've got Pope, Trippier, Botman, Saliba, Zinchenko, Odegaard, Rodri, space in midfield, Saka, Haaland, and now we're here with this left striker. Now, we both picked two players, but then actually I listened to Kev yesterday, which is probably maybe not the smartest thing to do. Sorry, Kev, if you're listening, um, because there is a bias there, the same as, same as, like, this is why it's lovely for me. Like, there's only Madison in there, and he's not anywhere near this team. So, like, <laughs> there's no there's no bias for me. I can look at this from a neutral point of view. But who who gets that spot? Because actually, we've got the two that we said, which were Rashford and Martinelli. But then Salah has had a great season as well. And then if I look at that list, like in terms of attackers, like Greedish is in there. Yeah, numbers wise, not at all. Like, but you've got. Um, Mares, who again I think's had a, had a brilliant season. You could even move Matoma up there, but again, I don't think he's better than anyone we've just said in this list. Like, it's it's actually these two wide positions, and I feel like we both agreed on Saka, which makes it easy. And a lot of people will probably be listening saying no, but he has dropped is... off a little bit recently. He has, yeah, he has but... dropped off a little bit recently. But but as, 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 as I said with mind. as I said with Zinchenko, so have Arsenal, haven't they? Like they've they've yeah, dropped yeah. off. So, but. I just think that this, these, the the two wide forward positions are the two where there's like the the most number of players to pick from. I, I, I hmm, this is where I'm probably going to get a little bit of stick. I don't think Rashford goes in. Big reason being he's as hot and cold as a player gets for a top four hmm. team, which Man United undoubtedly are. For a team that Man United want to be, which is winning the league, winning big honours, Marcus Rashford will not start in a league winning team every week. He just won't. He'd be a phenomenal player who's just that filler for if a striker gets in, injured or a left winger gets injured because he doesn't have that many facets to his game that allow him to change style. So if there's a team sitting in on the edge of their own box, Marcus Rashford becomes about a third as useful as he is when they're sat on the on the halfway line. Because, it, I mean, yeah. I'm, I've watched Man United a lot this season, purely because we're, like, in direct competition with each other. But also, they've been on telly that much through Europe. And it genuinely is Bruno Fernandes whipping a lovely ball in behind for Rashford to chase on to. And if you look at his numbers, Callum Wilson's got one less in less games, far less games as well. Minutes-wise, he's got nearly half the minutes. Yeah, Martinelli has one less goal, same amount of assists. Um, I think he's in played two one more games. Game. To be fair, two more. Is games. it? Is it one, two? Yeah, but he's also yeah. four, four and a half years younger. He's also yeah. thirty. He's also uh, four and a half years younger. I also yeah. think that Rashford is in a team that is purely set up for him to succeed. That team mm. is built around Marcus Rashford in a, in an attacking sense, whereas Martinelli, it's not built around him. It's just not. And he's still producing stupid numbers. I don't think Rashford is the answer to Man United winning and getting back to being on top and winning the league. I just don't. I've I've seen him live a few times now, probably double figures more than that. And I've never ever gone and thought, what a footballer. I thought you hit a ball well, you're quick, you're frighteningly quick. But even his mentality is not the same as it used to be. He used to get knocked over and he'd get back up and he'd chase it. Now you see him, he's throwing his arms in the air. He, he, at St James's, he chucked his boot. He's not the same guy. It's almost like it's gone to his head a bit. I don't think he will maintain this form. And I said it weeks ago. He's got two goals in nine games. In his last nine, he's got two goals. So what what we're saying in a roundabout face way then is that neither of our picks actually get in. And I think we, we probably should listen to the wisdom of Kev and actually both of us maybe overlooked Salah a little bit here because he's got... But, 
He's yeah. got more goals and assists than both of them, and he's apparently had a poor season. But that's by his standards, isn't it? Like that, that's the thing; it's by his standards. And I, I will say that's going to be part of my argument for the midfield. I will say that. So be ready. So I don't want to come across as a hypocrite here. But what I would say about salaries as well, there's been big moments that he's 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 let the team down, and I don't mean that in like a really vindictive way. He missed the penalty against Bournemouth. He missed the penalty a couple of weeks ago. He's He's had he's had one of them seasons where yes he's produced numbers there's no denying his quality he's still got assists but okay. he has okay. also floundered in moments so I, I genuinely think you could look at all of them and make arguments pro, <laughs> pros and cons. Okay, so we but do it like this. so we do it like this then. I'm gonna I'm gonna be very frugal and it's why it's why we're all in the business. But I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. Who's got the most trophies this year? Oh, I don't like out, that. Out of the three. Yeah, but we, we can't <laughs> we can't decide on them based on stats. We've said they all have their moments. Like, who's achieved the most this season? You, okay, well, Rash, let's say Rashford, we go with Rashford. Rash, Rashford couldn't come away with two trophies this year, couldn't he? Let, let's, let's go along with that. But in the run-up, and my Man United fans are going to be annoyed at me because I've got a few of them, but they played, they only played two Premier League teams in six rounds of uh, football. But you still got to beat what's in front of you, don't you? I know, I know. That's a fair enough argument. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just playing devil's but advocate with this. If, you've, if, you've got if to Arsenal beat had played all them games, they'd have won the trophy. Like I, I don't know if that's that's a. Oh, I don't know. I see what you're saying because he has come away with a trophy. He has come well, he away with a trophy. He might he come did, away he with because he might win the FA Cup as well. Yeah, he could do. He could do. Do you know what? I'm. I'm gonna just. I'm gonna just allow this one to be picked by you, uh, Jack. I, I don't think. I don't think I can necessarily. Right, in in because in, I, I'm maybe coming from an angle of bias as well because I don't just, like if, the way Rashford. It's just going to be. Picked, <laughs> <laughs> if it's just going to be picked by me. Then no, I'm joking. No, <laughs> trying that was James it. Madison for all the listeners we've oh, put into that there. No, no, not at all. Uh, I'm I'm, I'm going to go for it just because if we can't decide on stats and eye test, then we've got to go on everything. And he has he has won more trophies than anyone else we're talking about, and he might win too. So it's just. And I think well, you have people, to think. Yeah. People are talking about him as player of the season. Like I, no, I don't, no, no, no. I don't, I don't I'm, get I'm, that. I, if he if he carried on his first half of the season form all season, then absolutely, like a hundred percent. But I think he just, only carried it on for like eight weeks. Yeah, but but eight weeks of a season. Almiron could be player of the season. Then surely he scored well, about six goal of the season contenders himself. And he's not because I'm not I'm not daft enough to think that Miguel Almiron is all of a sudden a wonderful football player because he's not. He's yeah. very limited. He does well in a system that suits him and has played to his strengths in the same way Rashford does. Rashford's a far better footballer. But you can't tell me that he's better than players who would be given the same freedom in that team. I just don't think he is. I think Garnacho, given the same opportunity, would be better than him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, last position, and I want to try and do this quickly because I've got one more, like, Fun activity for us to do to end the uh, to end the podcast shortly because we're going to try and keep it within our time remit, but we will never do that because we just don't, you know. Um, but last position is centre mid, the third centre mid. So in midfield at the moment we have Rodri holding, Odegaard not not Rodri and Rob holding. Don't listen to us. Rodri in the holding position, uh, Odegaard, and then. But now before we say this, remember that what we've got in this conversation here is a Newcastle fan and a neutral now the problem i have with this though is that as a neutral to an extent i completely agree with everything that ewan's about to say but i'm going to put my put forward my argument so the the two players that we put in the two players that we disagreed on were bruno gamaris and kevin de bruyne now i as a leicester fan would happily have both of them in there like i couldn't argue with either of those but one's about to win the Premier League, but then, like you and said, it's it's by his own standard. I I can hold that. And then the other one is Bruno, who's been outstanding in this Newcastle team, who are potentially going to finish third, could finish fourth. So it's it's kind of that conversation of who's had the better individual season is what we've got to talk about, really, isn't it? Okay, but so they're I'm very different. Let... They're very different players, though, aren't they? Yeah, I was going to say I think one's more of a ten, one's more of a six-eight hybrid thing. My thing for Bruno is this stat alone 
shows his influence on what we are doing and what we've become. We haven't won a game without him playing this season. Yeah. Every single game we've won, he's played. To me, that shows the influence he's got. And if you take him out of our side and you put in, choose anyone in the league, choose anyone in the league, we, we don't win the amount of games we do as he is in the team because he offers so much to what we do and what we are and what we've become. Um, I feel like with De Bruyne, who is, by the way, I'm not arguing against De Bruyne, I'm arguing for Bruno here. De Bruyne, by his own standards, has not been at that level where he has... You know, can you remember the year when I think he got two hat-tricks back-to-back or something? Was it yeah. Wolves away? And like That's the standard of De Bruyne that, that I'm like almost used to. That's the elevated standard that he's got. It's a bit like the Salah argument. Whereas this season, he's had Haaland to hit. Like You could have put nearly anyone. Like, put Trent in his position. Trent's getting stupid numbers as well, isn't he? Yeah. And, oh, yeah, yeah. And and I don't. Um, that's not. Me. You've still got to do it. It's not. It's not saying. Oh well, yeah. It's easy. It's not. But he's got. He's got a cyborg up front. He's got someone who literally put the ball within a two or three meter radius, and the bloke's going to get on the end of it. Yeah. It's yeah. it's made his job easier having that partnership. Whereas I feel like Bruno is having to almost drag Longstaff, Willock, Joe Linton, improving them. He's he's. He's making players like Fabian Shaw better because he offers that security to let him get on the ball. He's he's creating spaces. I don't know if you if you saw the Brentford highlights when we had a terrible first half and then went four two three one and it was him and yeah. Joel in the pivot. He he allowed Isaac to get on the ball and he was like, "If you need me, I'm here and play it, and I'll give you it back." And I, he's almost just he finds himself in yards of space all the time. So for me, in what we're doing, if you take him out of our team, we're probably seventh, eighth. See, I'm gonna the I'm gonna do something are. now, and I, I wouldn't normally leave it down to this, but I'm I'm 100 gonna do it. Like, so they're two very different midfielders, right? So I'm gonna go through some stats, and I feel like I'm gonna change my own mind on this because I've just looked through the stats, and that I can't compare them on attacking because Bruno Gamarsh is not an attacking midfielder. So what I can sort of compare them on, but then it's unfair to do this for De Bruyne. Is team play is quite an important one. Like I feel like team play is an important stat for both of them. And then yeah. you've got defending as well. Now, defending is a little bit unfair on De Bruyne if I'm going to take away, um, <clears throat> if I'm going to take away attacking from Bruno. But if we compare the two, attack. I mean, I'll go through all the stats. Why not alone? Just just to be fair, because if I'm putting defending in there, I'm going to put attacking in there. So De Bruyne leads everything in attacking, apart from shooting success and shots off target. So Bruno's hit more shots on target, but has also had less shots. So it's yeah. kind of like. He's had three, th- almost three times as, as less shots. But so De Bruyne leads everything in attacking that actually matters. So in terms of goals, goals per match, minutes per goal, shots, shots on target, shooting accuracy, De Bruyne is lead. Penalties won, free kicks scored, goals were right foot, goals were left foot. The only thing he doesn't is headed goals. Bruno's winning on headed goals, actually. But everything else, Kevin De Bruyne is winning, right? Understandable yeah, yeah. on attacking front. Team yeah. play is where we have more of a balance because this is where their actual influence on the team Right. So you've got these two, which I think should go in attacking. So I think this actually is unfair on Bruno because this should go in, attack- in attacking. But assists, De Bruyne's got 16, Bruno's got five. But this one's quite important because I feel like any player can kind of get this. Is And that's big chances created. Bruno's got two, De Bruyne has got 30, which is... Jesus. Yeah, I know that's ridiculous in any book. Uh, passes, though... Bruno has done 1,350. De Bruyne has done 1,230. His pass completion is 4% better than De Bruyne's. And his forward passing, uh, he's done 17 more. Uh, but, but passes backward, De Bruyne's done more. But I think that's the style of play. De Bruyne's going to be playing more passes backwards because they recycle the ball a lot more. Um, Bruno's yeah. been on the ball more. De Bruyne has had more through balls, more crosses, and more and been dispossessed less times. Defending, though it's pretty obvious how this is going to work, is that Bruno completely wipes the floor with De Bruyne in terms of defending. Uh, more clean sheets, less goals conceded, more blocks, more interceptions. So 27 to 7 on interceptions, 67 to 25 on tackles, 32 to 10 on successful tackles, 14 uh, to 10 clearances, 15 to 12 aerial battles won. So it's basically what type of midfielder we want in this team. 
really. Do we want yeah. one that is a free, one of the best free flowing attacking players we've ever seen in the Premier League, or a player who is sturdy, does a really good job for the team, breaks up the play, passes the ball really well, like passes the ball progressively really well as well. Apparently, I didn't, I didn't, what, I wasn't sure on that one. But. His, his, his. The thing with Bruno is he's not afraid to to look forward. He doesn't. He's not a safe footballer. And I know De Bruyne's obviously like different level in that respect. But when you've got the tenacity and the aggression and also the defensive capabilities that Bruno's got to be able to go and do the other side of the game is quite rare. Yeah. Um, and that's why he was probably brought as a six, but ended up as an eight because he's just got so much to offer. Yeah. Look, I'm, I'm, I actually think the perfect midfield three, if you were going to make an absolute like balanced midfield three, is probably Rodri, Bruno, and De Bruyne. But mm. obviously, Odegaard's been so good this season; you can't drop him. So, and, and we both agreed on Odegaard, weirdly enough. So, like, I feel like, yeah, we just agreed. But like, we we said that the ones we agreed on would just stay in there because otherwise, we're arguing for the sake of arguing. Um. I, I, I don't know, like, the the 30 big chances created from De Bruyne, it's, it's stupid. Let's be honest, like, he's, got 16, <laughs> he's got 16 assists, but I, I know I know that's, that's like, a case in point because Trippier takes free kicks and De Bruyne takes... I was going to say, like, that's, but, I was going to say Trippier gets big how chances many, but, created every game and it's just with, not because I watch him all the time. But with De Bruyne, though, like, how many of those are probably from open play as well? Like, and... I'd be interested it. to know the difference. I, that yeah. would make it way more yeah. interesting. I will say that. I just, I, I don't know. I feel like we've got, and this, this is, this is where I'm, I need to really put forward my, put my foot down on De Bruyne. Is look at that team, right? If we look at that eleven in front of us, right, we've only got two players from a team that might win the treble this season. <laughs> Is that not just because they've got really good players everywhere? No, but like in yeah, but the, uh, like you look at the team, like I don't know, like the, these are all outstanding individuals. Whereas, like I just De Bruyne is just one of the best players that's ever played in the Premier League, and I just even this season, like again, he's been poor by his standards. But we just read off the numbers; he's still been incredible, and he's been poor by his standards. And it's well, just... I tell you what, you put De Bruyne in, but you got to put Isaac in at left wing. I'm joking. No, I'm no, joking. no, no. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'll, I'll put, I'll put, I'll put Madison back in. I'm in control of this. I'll put him back in. Right. I'm no, gonna I go. can, I can, I can concede it. He's, he's it's, one, it's he's a... I actually think he's going to go down as the best midfielder the Premier League's ever seen. Yeah, but if you, if you look at it, though, like if if we were going to swap anyone out, and it, again, it'd be ridiculously harsh because he's he's been incredible this season as well. But like, you, I mean, Rodri would be the likely one to swap for Bruno, I think. But I don't know. Like, it's just. Right, it, uh, isn't it mad that Rodri's only twenty five? Bruno yeah, and Rodri are both twenty five years old, and when you think about the the levels they could get to, he's he's frighteningly good. Rodri is, I think. Rodri's, he's he's like the modern day CDM, isn't he? Like he's not like yeah. like indeed he like last night was a prime point. I don't know how many times you saw him like get the ball and he had space in front of him, but he just stopped and then would pass it sideways or pass it backwards, like. To be a good, effective CDM in the modern football, you have to be able to do both sides of the game. And Rodri is so good at both sides. Like he can, he can ping the ball and he can keep the ball so well under pressure. But he can also tackle. He is like, if I'm going to say anything, he's the closest thing to it. Like, and as I've got older, I've appreciated this player. I'm about to say so much more. But he's the closest thing to a Sergio Busquets regen we're ever going to get, isn't he? Yeah. I know. Um, I've got, well, I'm sure I've said this before, but Ferran, who's my Barcelona supporting um, pal, who's currently an adopted Geordie, lives in Newcastle. Um, he was so, so against Busquets. He just doesn't like him. But I think I told him this. I think it's because he's been spoilt with Gavi, with Pedri, with Xavi, with Iniesta, with Frankie de Jong. They're all glamorous footballers who love. But Busquets is so underrated for what he does. Yeah. When you yeah. look at his little drag back that he does to draw players in, and then he goes, and then he'll just spread it and settle the player down again. He's just brilliant. Right. So that's our that's our team. For those of you who uh, we will post this on Instagram and um, on Twitter. Uh, for those of you who can't see it, but we'll run through it. Uh, so together, we've gone for Pope uh, in goal, Trippier, Botman, Saliba, Zinchenko. At in at the in defence, Odegaard, Rodri, De Bruyne in midfield, and Saka, Haaland, and Rashford up front. Some disagreement on that, and I feel like some nice conceding from from both of us there to an extent. But um, 
I'm going to put some pressure on you and for the next thing I'm going to do. And it's the last thing we're going to do today. And we are going to try and predict the do final, I know what this is? Oh, the final Premier League table. That's what we're going to try and do. Okay. Oh, God. But we're going to do it properly. Okay. We're actually going to do this properly. It's not going to be any names in like, well, I say we, Ewan's going to do it properly. All right. Because I've, I've done this before and I know how it ended up. So Premier League table oh. as it stands is like this. Okay. City at top. Um, are they, is this how it stands? Let me have a look where I'm actually 34. Yeah, yeah, so this is exactly yeah, how it's, yeah. how it stands at the moment. City are top, 32 played, 76 points. Arsenal, 33, 75. Down at the bottom, this is what we've got here. I'll, I'll quickly share it again. Um, so we'll run over a little bit, but not too far this time. Uh, we'll run over a little bit, but this is this is good because what we get to do, or well, what Ewan get, gets to do, is he has to predict the actual scores and results in order to do it. This is a brilliant website, by the way. You can do it for every league in the world. It's incredible. Um, but it's like a table calculator. So... The first game that I need you to predict, just because it's a game that should have been on match day 20. Is there any earlier one? This no. is tempting fate. I don't like this. I'm not a well, fan we'll... of this. This is making me twitch. Oh. Bold, bold claims get views, you, and that's where we get the the, the, the views from. So we've got to go for it. All right, your first, your first game, because it should have been match day 25. Newcastle v Brighton. What what are you saying for that game? What do you think the score is going to be? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go really conservative on all of Newcastle's fixtures because I don't want to... You know, like tease myself and make myself. I mean, you, you, you know, you're going to beat us like three 0 so that's fine. Right, I'm going to go one one us Brighton, but I'd, but at St James's, it's a different story. So I'm, I'm that's a very conservative estimate. Which would to be fair if like that's that's put you even with just a draw that would put you ten points clear of Liverpool if that's just how it went. So that's that's not bad, I suppose. Uh, Twenty eight. You got three games here. Liverpool, Fulham. The only thing is, Liverpool play twice by the time we next play, so they'll have they could be within three points of us by the time we next play, and our next game is Arsenal. Yeah. So it starts putting the pressure on. Right, Liverpool, Fulham. At Anfield. Uh, I actually think Fulham might do all right there, but I'm going to say Liverpool two one. Fair. Uh, City, West Ham. At, at the Etihad. Four one. Ooh. Resurgent West Ham taking a paste in. Fair enough. Uh, Brighton v United at the Amex. I act, this is one that I actually think could work in the same way it would with us and Brighton. I think Man United aren't playing particularly well. I know they did well against Villa, but I'm going to say Brighton won, Man United won. Man United aren't free flowing, and if Brighton catch them, and I keep tapping. I keep tapping eleven. Um, not eleven. One, one more. <laughs> oh, definitely not. But that, again, that puts United right on your tail again with that draw. Uh, right, yeah. now we're back up to match day 32, where we've got Brighton v City. Again, going to be really interesting, but I do think City will, City will probably edge them 2-1. Yep. That's fair. 2-1 City. Uh, United-Chelsea at Old Trafford. 13-0 Man United. 2-0 um, uh, <laughs> two, two, two Man United. Yeah, I could see that happening. I could. Chelsea all over the shop at the moment. But that that pretty much, I mean, that pretty much seals the title for City, I'd say, because that's even though Arsenal still need to, would that would be their their game and extra game in hand done, um, yeah. that would have them seven points clear. If it, I mean, it doesn't play. There out is going to be there is going to be twists and turns. Though. I don't think it. Even with that, I, I I think someone will drop something somewhere. Oh, but that that, that doesn't change the bottom at all. Like, none of those results have changed. But I just had a quick scroll down. Not nothing's changed at the bottom. <laughs> uh, right tonight, Arsenal Chelsea. I think Arsenal will win this one quite comfortably. I think it'll be 3 1, 3 0. So go go 3 1 just to be goal difference wise. I'm 3 1. I'm 3 1. So that brings it back to four point gap. All teams will have now played 34. And City are four points ahead. United leapfrog you with 67 66. Liverpool got 59. Yeah. Brighton got 54. Down the bottom. Um, West Ham not quite safe because they're only on 34. Wolves, I'd say, are safe on 37. And then you've got Leicester Leeds, Forest on 30, Everton on 29, Southampton 24, who I'd say are down with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah not mathematically, are. but pretty much. Right. Here, here okay. it gets tasty because we've got all these games. Right. Bournemouth, Chelsea. <sighs> uh, <laughs> that, that could be Bournemouth win that. Uh, I'm going yeah. to go draw. I'm going to go draw. 1-1. One, one. One, one. Uh, City Leeds. Oh, dear. 5-1. Five, five, uh, Spurs Palace. 
Now, don't mm. take take your Newcastle hat off here because this is where this is when when I did this, I was going for the game. Palace have been Palace have been good, but I don't think they're good enough to get a win there. I'm going to say yeah. Tottenham, Tottenham, two one. Yeah, see, I I was doing this when I was looking at all the teams around us. I was going, oh, I really want them to lose, but then I'm like, but will? Oh they? no, I'm will gonna they? I'm doing it genuinely. Yeah. Like I'm gonna give them all the points I can give them to make me feel better. Yeah, uh, Wolves Villa. Uh, do you know what? It's a derby, isn't it? That's a hard one to call. I think Villa will probably win, but it would be tighter than we think. Maybe 2-1 to Villa. Yeah, 1-2 one, one, away win. Uh, Liverpool-Brentford. 3-1 Liverpool. Yeah, I think Brentford have kind of not gone off the boil. They've, they're not they've, bad fa- they've faded off, haven't they? They've got nothing to play for. UV Arsenal. Right, so I'm going to say I'm going to give Arsenal the win only because I think that's probably the one we're most likely to lose. However, I do actually think we could get a result there. So I'm just going to go 1-0 Arsenal. But that's because yeah. I want to see... I want to give us the worst chance possible. Right, brilliant. Um, West Ham United. Uh, West Ham v United, not just West Ham United. Yeah. Uh, oh, probably probably 2-1 Man United. Yeah. Right, this is this is the one. Fulham v Leicester. <laughs> That'd be nice, please. I'm going to say draw. I'm going to say draw. Score draw. 1-1. One, one. One, one. One, one. Uh, Brighton v Everton. I think I'll be quite comfortable to be honest. I think that's probably a 3 0. Yeah. And then this is a big one. Forest Southampton. At at the City Ground. It's it's at City Ground, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna have to say Forest. Two one. Probably could be more. Yeah, Southampton do seem to have goals in them at the moment, don't they? They they do, yeah, they do. They, they weren't actually that bad against us. They were just very naive. And that still has City four points clear. You're four points ahead of Liverpool still. Brighton five points behind Liverpool, so top five seems to be wrapping itself up. Um, we are one point above the drop. Forest move into sixteenth, two points above, but our goal difference is still significantly better than anyone else's. Uh, yeah. Right, three games to go. Leeds, Leeds, Newcastle. I do think I do think it's likely we get a result there, so I'm I'm going to go uh, two nil Newcastle. Uh, Not confident, but. Oh, that'd be a good game. 2-2. Yeah, we'll draw that. Uh, Palace, Bournemouth. Another good game. I'm going to say high score, and I think 2-2 with that one as well. Chelsea v Forest. Uh, That's not Forest a great. Shock, shock, shocking away from home, so I'm going to have to go Chelsea with that one, like 1-0. Yeah, fair. Southampton, Fulham. Um, I'm going to give Southampton a point here. I think maybe one-one. United Wolves. Man United two 0 I don't see Wolves giving them any problems. Brentford West Ham. Um, I'm I'm going to go Brentford win because they're difficult to play at home. So two-one. Yeah, Everton City. Four 0 I always find the city find it difficult against Everton. Don't know why. Um, Arsenal v Brighton. Hmm. I, <laughs> it depends which Arsenal turn up because Arsenal, if they play well at home and they've got something to play for, then they're dangerous. So I'm going to give them a 3 2 win. Yeah. Yeah, fair. Leicester v Liverpool. Yeah, I think that's probably a Liverpool win, that one. 3 3 1. Ouch. Thanks, mate. Yeah, sorry. sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, pal. Um, <laughs> which has City still four points, still title still in the balance. Liverpool four points behind you still. United four points above. Uh, Leicester, so Forest still 33, Leicester 31, Leeds 30, Everton 29, Southampton 25. Two That's games... how I think the bottom three will stay. You fucking hope so, mate. Uh, right, two games to go. Spurs, Brentford. Another good game. Um, I'm going to say Spurs win this one. 2-1. Uh, Bournemouth United. Another good one. Uh, I'm going to go Man United win, just because I said I would favour the teams around us. So I'm going to go 2-1. But I think Bournemouth might get a draw there. Yeah. Fulham Palace. I think I think they're the only team we haven't beat this season, Bar City and Liverpool. Well, Bournemouth. How strange is that? Yeah. yeah we beat be them fair. in the cup. But do you know, do you know, they are a, di- they're a difficult time aside. Do you know how many points we gave to Bournemouth in Southampton alone? Oh, I don't say 12. It was 12. Oh, my. See, one, so one South, or two South wins Hampton. in there, you're safe. 
Southampton got 20, a quarter of Southampton's points, just under, um, was delivered directly from us. Oh, man. That is sick. And if, and if we win one of those games, we are level on points with West Ham. Which, to be honest, I think puts you safe. So, yeah, that is that is a really big stick now. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm Fulham... going to go pa- Palace 3 1 on that one. Wow. Palace uh, run Liv- away from home on the break. So, it's going to be a game for you, to favour you. Liverpool Villa. I'm going to say Liverpool, like I've just said before, but I do think Villa could turn up and make it difficult for them because Liverpool aren't great defensively, but they are good offensively. So, I'm going to say 2 1 Liverpool. Uh, Wolves Everton. Any game's got nil nil written on over it. I feel like it's that. I'm going to say one one. Oh. Forest Arsenal. Do you know what? I think that's where Arsenal might lose the title if it's still. I think Forest might get a draw. I know it's weird. I'm going to go Arsenal just to make it more interesting. Two one Arsenal, but I think For- Forest could get a draw there. Yeah. West Ham Leeds. Two nil West Ham. Sam Allardyce back at his old club, though. Yeah, I know. Brighton, Southampton. Comfortable 3 0, 3 1. Brighton, that one, 3 0 go. Which, which would send Southampton down. Um, yeah. City, Chelsea. Um, mm, weirdly, I think Chelsea could turn up and make it difficult, but I'm going to say 2 0 City. Yeah, it's a weird one, isn't it? You kind of bank Arsenal fans will be banking on Chelsea there, but yeah, City fans will be banking on Chelsea tonight as well, won't they? And mm. uh, a, a, a divorceable um result in the uh, <laughs> talking about Alex household there, Newcastle v Leicester. I'm gonna I can, say, I can only see that game going one way because it's a mentality thing. I can only see that game going one way. Two, I'm gonna go 2 0 Newcastle. Yeah, Do you know I what? Know what? Do you know, I'm gonna go draw. I don't, 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 don't. don't don't be all pitying and like self-deprecating. Like that's that. If any game, if if out of all the games we got left, that is the one that Leicester fans have just written off. We 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 fancy ourselves better at home against Liverpool than we do away at you lot on a Monday night. When you've got top four to play, when you've got top four still to play for at home at St James's, one game to go. Where actually, if you got if because at the moment, didn't I say you were still four points ahead of Liverpool? You win yeah. that. You get top we're, we're, four. If, if we them. win that, we yeah we do yeah, yeah that. Car- so oh, we need seventy one points. Yeah, so that puts you on 72, Liverpool 68, one game to go. That's done. And the title's done there as well because City four points ahead. Oh, God, yeah. So even with Arsenal winning. And then at the bottom, we're still one point clear with one game to go. Oh. Christ. Oh, I've Jack. Done. Oh, man. It, it goes to, and to be fair, I think it goes to the final day anyway. I'm not. You're not alone with this. Right, final day. 4.30 on the 28th of May. Can I just see where Villa and Brighton are in my table at the moment? Just because yes, that's, so that's interesting. Going in, going into the final day, we have got City champions again with a game to spare. Arsenal in second. United comfortably third. United, uh, Newcastle comfortably fourth. Liverpool comfortably fifth. Spurs, Brighton, Villa. There could a, a, a big shift mm. with Villa and Spurs. Like if, I mean, whatever. I, I think Brighton, Brighton could come sixth. Villa could come seventh or sixth with a big shift. Nothing else changes there. Then you've got Brentford, Fulham, Palace, Chelsea, who would finish in the bottom half in your universe. Um, but whether that's top of the bottom half or lower, because they could finish below Bournemouth still. Um, oh, Wolves, well, we play them on the last day. Yeah, Wolves, West Ham, Forest could go down with a with because Leeds have got a better goal difference than them. If if you predicted Leeds to win, um, Leicester. Everton, Everton also on thirty could also leapfrog both. Like, look, look at the goal l- difference. I mean, uh, yeah, but that's the thing. It, 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 if them two win and us and Forest lose, we go down and them two stay up. That is insane. I, 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 it's I'm, great for a neutral, but I feel for you, mate. I mate, my blood pressure you. last night was bad enough. Um, yeah. Right, first one, Villa Brighton. Gonna go draw two two. No Desmond, fair enough. Brighton, Brighton have had some really tough res- uh, fixtures in the last half. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There. Palace um, Forest. I'm... See, Palace have got nothing to play for, so this is where it gets tough. I'm going to mm-hmm. go draw Forest. Yeah, Forest will get a draw there, which keeps them up. Does it? Mm. No one, uh, on, only us. On, only us could overtake them. We're already out, so that would keep right, them okay. up. Okay. Okay. Um, what score? One-one. Arsenal Wolves. 
3 0 Arsenal. Brentford City. Um, doesn't really matter. 2 2 0 City. About to type in 2 0 Brentford then. Uh, Chelsea, Newcastle. <laughs> I'm going to go draw. I'm going to be conservative. I know it doesn't matter now, but I am going to say a draw. So I'll go 2-2. Two, two. Although I don't see us conceding two against them. I'm suddenly saying that. Oh, Everton v Bournemouth. See, it's at Everton, which which is a yeah. pain in the backside. That for you. And, and Bournemouth. You know, you know what they're like. For. Bournemouth will be done. They'll be on the beach. Having said that, though, Bournemouth have been relentless for weeks, and I don't get the impression that Gary O'Neill's going to accept it and just like tailing off. But I'm I'm going to give Everton I'm going to give Everton the win, right? Hmm. I'm going to give Everton the win. I'm going to say two one. Four 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 nil four one. What a Liverpool? Who is Southampton, okay. by the way? Okay, four one Liverpool. Uh, Leeds v Spurs. <laughs> Another one that it's at, it's at Leeds, so it's so. And Spurs are well, we know what Spurs are. Um I'm gonna go draw mm. and I'm gonna go two two. Which means that we finish above Leeds at least. Um Leicester West Ham. I'm gonna go draw. But that's only conservative. I actually think you'll win that game because West Ham will be safe. But I am gonna go draw. I'm gonna say two two. Our goal was on the last day. Uh, always United is, v- though. Match of the day, last day is yeah. always a big one. Ma- Manchester United v Fulham. Um, 3-1, Man United. I Which think mean? I gave Man United a, a win in every single week and Liverpool. Yeah, you mean you've, 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 you've pretty much, like... So I yeah. wasn't, I wasn't like, you know, putting them... So, right, here we go, Jack. Ewan's oh, final... Oh, no! Pre- yeah, I saw it then. I, I knew as soon as you said there was... Oh, no! Off. So I actually think City, you'll beat West Ham. I actually do, but I'm just like I can't believe that. So City win the league on 94, Arsenal 90, Manchester United 79, Newcastle 73. Liverpool claw it back and get 71 though. They do get close. Close. They will get close. Spurs yeah, I think 62, so. Brighton 61, with an incredible goal difference. To be fair, yeah, compared to everyone no, around. I saw that. I saw that. It's been I don't know if that's us or them. Like um, Villa 59 in eighth. Brentford 53, Fulham 47, Palace 45, Chelsea 44, Bournemouth 41, West Ham 38, Wolves 38, Forest 34, Everton 33, Leicester 32, Leeds 31, Southampton 25. See, so I'm Ewan's not going to be back on the show next week. Ewan's, Ewan's <laughs> being re- replaced next week. He's not no, no, no. Back. I genuinely, I think, I, I, I think that you'll get a result against West Ham, which would save you, but I was trying to be as like, like level-headed as possible, and I'm not sure where Everton will get a win. I think I think there's there, there's I mean we've what we've done really, and I mean or what you've done I think is a lot of those results, and I mean this in the nicest possible way. They're quite safe results. They're kind of like yeah. the ones that we'd expect them to be. Yeah, Whereas yeah. there's like there's gonna be upset somewhere. Like we Cosmos, might be yeah. we might beat Liverpool. We might actually go to Newcastle and win, and maybe like disrupt the whole top four race. Like there's all sorts of things that could change. So you actually have a massive influence on the bottom and the top. Yeah, it's ridiculous, isn't it? But massive. I, I, just, just for, just for, just for like, like clarity. I think Southampton. Why is there a picture of Wayne Rooney and I Shrek think. on there? Just like that, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> just staring at me. Like I don't know why I've just noticed double. that. That's ridiculous. Who's Pep compared to there? Is that is that the Star Wars? Yeah, Star. You know, Pep, I was gonna, I was gonna start doing that as a thing. You know, I was gonna say like. Um, Let's Who's do a it. good like, celebrity look at? Oh, where, Iron oh, Robin. Iron Robin. <laughs> looks like looks like Pep from the top. The ball, you know. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, but I do um, think S- uh, Everton, Leeds, and Southampton are gone. That's my bottom three. Yeah. I do think that. Yeah, I think you're probably right, but I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think we've, we're going down. I think actually none of look the at your goal she's... difference as well. Your goal difference is so much superior. So as long as you can stop them going in at one end, you'll be all right. Yeah, but it's it's ridiculous though. Like you look at the goals we've scored, and then like the teams around us, we have conceded more than most of them. Like, yeah. but we've scored more than all of them. That's the problem. And like, but then you look at it. If if it ends like that, we'll have lost twenty two games in a season, and that's that's deser- that that alone is deserving of relegation. That is poor, isn't it? Jesus. Yeah. So. Oh, Go right. on then, show so, yours. 
No, I'm not going to show you my mate. We'll be here all day. Um, what, what, I, what did you? Did you? Did I don't you think, think I changed. I don't think I'd have changed. I don't think when I did it, I changed that much. I think, I think I had Spurs seventh and Villa sixth, maybe. I definitely okay. had you getting in the top four, but I couldn't remember whether it was third or fourth. Liverpool, I think, were fifth in the end because they've actually got a reasonably okay run in. The only um, thing is they've got to win every game. Yeah, yeah. and I, Not, the, not the that that's impossible, but that would mean they've got to win nine on the bounce in a row, which is a big ass. I, not that they're incapable, but... I actually think I had us staying up on goal difference over Everton, I think. Wow. But I can't remember where the results changed. I definitely had us staying up, but like skin of our teeth, but either by a point or by goal difference. I... I like I say, I don't think I changed that much to you. Yeah. Um, so I think but, you'll. St- I do think you'll stay up. I do. You've got too much quality, and I know that uh, we we had that problem. You got it. You got to use it, and you. Yeah, you do. You do. Yeah. Right. We we'll finish up there. We will. We will be returning next week. We we promise. Uh, Tuesday is going to be our recording day. So Tuesday nights or Wednesdays will be release date. But Tuesdays when we are going to be uh, recording. But. It's been really, really good to be back. We're really hope, hoping and praying that we will be consistent with it this time. We've got lots of things coming up, lots of ideas. Over the summer, uh, we're going to try and get people on for uh, like season reviews like I did last year with people and discussions. Also, some like some sort of shorthand ones like best teams, combined 11s, all these sorts of things, and we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. But uh, yeah, really, really, really good to be back. And we shall uh, return next week. Ewan, thank you, thank you very much. Pleasure as always, mate. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see you soon. Thanks. Thanks very much, guys. Take care.